the end product of all these consultations is this monetary policy statement which we are presenting today. This recalibration statement aims to address the current state of affairs in the far as price and exchange rate stability in the economy is concerned. It is informed by two pillars, namely restoration of price and exchange rate stability and also re-monetizing the local currency so that it serves its purpose as a medium of exchange and a store of value. As you know, one of the key functions of the central bank is price and exchange rate stability and also inflation management. Before I go into the actual monetary policy statement itself, I just want to touch briefly on developments on the global market. I think you are all aware that as a, as a, as a result of the geopolitics, we are seeing sluggish growth in the world. And for 2023, uh, world growth was estimated at 3.1% and remaining the same in 2024. Going closer to home, yes, our economy has been characterized by high inflation. And this is the reason why we are here today, to try and see how we can address this stunt, which has been upon us for quite a while. However, despite the high inflationary environment, I am pleased to say that our economy grew by 3.5% in, uh, in 2023 and is projected to grow at 3.5% in 2024. But that is before we factor in the impact of this uh, uh, nino induced drought. And if you do factor it in, it's been said that we might end up with 0% growth with no policy intervention. But if we do have some policy intervention, we could achieve a better figure than that. On the external front, we continue to record uh, the current account surplus, currently standing at 125.6 million for 2023. Now, in coming up with this uh, monetary policy statement, we first of all did a diagnostic to say, what is it that we are trying to address? And we came up with five key issues that needs to be addressed. First of all, there is the issue of currency and the exchange rate stability. We have witnessed exchange rate instability, currency instability in this market, and this has been driven by mainly a high demand for foreign currency as a store of value. What used to happen was that, and what is happening even until today, is that if you get hold of a Zimbabwe doll, you would want to quickly change it into a foreign currency, and more importantly, into US dollars, so that you maintain the value of your money. There has also been reduced confidence due to continued currency stability and volatility, and the wide margin between the interbank rate and the power market rate. There has also been reduced use of the local currency for domestic transactions. We've seen most outlets now wanting to cut prices in US dollars and not accepting the local currency. And there has also been lack of certainty and predictability when it comes to the exchange rate. Each morning, someone will just think up an exchange rate of their choice, and that is the rate that applies. So, in view of those factors that I've, I've mentioned about, this policy is going to look at implementing a market-determined exchange rate determination system. And I'll talk about that more later when I give you the measures that we are going to implement. The second issue was on financial sector stability. Fortunately, this is not an issue at all. Our financial sector is very sound and stable. We have not seen any trouble trends. And as they say, 
if it's not broken, don't fix it. So there is nothing much that we are going to do. We just continue on the good work that the outgoing governor has done in maintaining discipline within the banking sector. Third issue, money supply growth. I've said in a previous meeting that uh, if printing money could make nations prosperous, then there would be no nation which is a third world nation. We've learned from past experience that it does not help to print money. Certainly not under my watch. It's not going to happen. The next problem is foreign exchange mobilization and reserve accumulation. For a central bank to be able to defend its currency, it has to have reserve. And the governor has been doing a lot over the past uh, year, quietly building up reserves. And I think again we'll talk about that later. And those of you who were here yesterday, you could have witnessed the result of some of the work that he's doing, that he's been doing. And the fifth issue, to do with the promoting of local demand for the local currency. Currently, we are being told that uh, the economy is trading 80 to 85 percent in US dollars, 15 to 20 percent in local currency. Also, we have seen that there is a major outcome on the part of the citizens when it comes to the problem of change. If you buy, if you go to a shop to buy anything, you give them a dollar, they give you change in the form of sweets, chocolates, which you don't need. And clearly we need to address the issue of currency divisibility. They have also uh, been issues to do with uh, lower denomination notes, people not accepting certain denominations of the local currency, sold notes, the list goes on. So to that extent, this policy seeks to come up with measures to deal with demand for the local currency. Now, turning to the new monetary policy measures that we want to introduce. First of all, we said, what are the objectives of this monetary policy statement? What is it that we are trying to achieve? Four things. Number one, we want a solid and stable national currency for this country. It hasn't happened for many years. In this time, we had that in place. We want a stable and sustainable exchange rate. We want robust policy credibility and restoration of market confidence. It is my wish that after speaking today, subsequent monetary policy statements will be just to say we are walking the top. What we said we're going to do is what we are going to continue to do. We want a stable, a sustainable macroeconomy, as envisioned in Vision 2030 and also in NTS1. So with those four pillars in mind, we would want to implement the monetary policy statement in a sequential manner. Some of the things have already started happening. You just have not been told about it. First of all, determination of a market determined exchange rate, efficient and optimal money supply management, introduction of a new structured currency, <coughs> anchoring of the currency on reserves, mainly gold and foreign currency balances, 
and of course other measures that I am also I'm also going to cover later on. All Zimbabwe dollar notes and coins held by account holders will be credited into their ZIP accounts using the applicable conversion rate, conversion factor. The banks will continue to accept these deposits for a period of 21 days after today. The Reserve Bank has made special arrangements for those in the outlying areas who may not have bank accounts and we have uh, uh, made arrangements with POSB and uh, AFC Commercial Bank and they will take their cash to these banks and those, that cash will be converted to ZIC. However, KYC will apply. If anyone is going to bring notes worth above $100,000, you need to know where you got it and why you've been keeping it. This is usual KYC requirements. Issuance of new banknotes and coins. Zip coins are going to be issued, zip notes and coins are going to be issued in denominations of 1 zip, 2 zip, 5 zip. 10 zig, 20 zig, 50 zig, 100 zig, and 200 zig, and then for divisibility, we are also going to have coins, which would be half a zig and a quarter of a zig, to complement that. Because as I said earlier on, we've been having a problem of change where someone, because one zig, when you wake up roughly, is going to be equal to six US cents. If we leave it at one zig, it means the smallest thing you can buy will be for six years and so we need to <coughs> further break down that one zip into smaller coin denominations. This is the new currency. It's specimen, so if you, if you think you're going to spend it one it way. But can you pass it around so that people can see? And we can I please have it back after? <laughs> This is this is five six. This is one six. This is two zip. This side, this side, two zip. This side again. This this side, please, this side. This side. This side. Can you pose a big thing? Can you pose a big thing? Can you pose a big thing? Back to your right. Back to your right. Thank you. Yes. Governor, can you show it this side as well? Yes, Thank you. So, what is going to anger this currency? Because I gave you the definition of a structured currency, and it says that such a currency must be angered by reserves in the form of forex or by commodities such as gold. Zig shall at all times be fully anchored and fully backed by a composite basket of reserves comprising foreign currency, precious metals, mainly gold, received by the Reserve Bank as part of in-kind royalties and kept in the vaults of the bank. Foreign currency balances will be accumulated through market purchases from the 25% surrender, as well as sale of some precious minerals that may not have been received in the form of gold. For example, platinum. As of today, 
5th April 2024, the Reserve Bank's reserve asset holdings comprise plus or minus 100 million US dollars in nostro balances. This is foreign exchange that we already hold. We also have 2,522 kilograms of gold with 185 million, of which one ton of that gold is held offshore and the balance is onshore. Those of you who were here yesterday, you would have seen that out of the need for transparency and also for me to confirm to His Excellency that I have taken over what Dr. Mangunja left in the Central Bank. We opened the vaults of the Central Bank and you were able to see the gold that we are holding. I saw that on such social media, some of you were saying, oh, you only got 2.5 tons of gold, you were converting it and coming up with a number and converting it to import car. And then I say to myself, are these people real economic analysts? Don't they know that Zimbabwe is 80 to 85 percent dollarized? Therefore, we already have 85 percent of the money circulating in this country as foreign exchange before we even factor what is going to be converted to zip. As it stands currently, our entire local currency component of reserve money, which is what we reserve money in Zim dollars, as it stands, is at 2.6 trillion Zimbabwe dollars. If you convert that at today's closing price, it will give you a closing interbank exchange rate. It will give you almost 80 million US dollars. Now, let's do the maths. I told you that I've got 100 million in cash in most of our life. And I've got 185 million worth of gold. Total 285 million. This entire market, the same dollars that are circulating, are worth 80 million. I can buy the entire stock of Zimbabwe dollars, all of it without stressing the center of bank because I got more than three times half. So, as I said to the bankers early this morning, if you want to join me, if you want to bet against the dollar, it's game on. Because I will buy all your, your, your currency. And then, when I talk about the other measures that are coming and when you're desperate for that zip, I'll sell it to you at my price. Also, just for noting, last year the Central Bank was selling gold coins. Because some of you were saying, oh, where is all that gold? It's in your pockets. We gave you gold coins and you were paying for those in Zim dollars. And that's almost a ton of gold that we sold to you. But some of you were saying there is some missing gold somewhere. My brother, Dr. John, is a Christian. He doesn't take people's money. <laughs> Exchange rate management system. So, the starting exchange rate, as I said, will be determined by the prevailing closing interbank rate. And I've just been given the numbers today so that those of you who are good at maths can do their maths. The rate, the interbank rate today closed at 33,903.9916. And the gold PM fix as for yesterday, was $2,293.50 per ounce. That gives you a conversion factor of 2,500 and a starting exchange rate for the ZIG to USD of 13.5616. As you can see, we are doing everything transparently. Starting exchange rate, 13.5616. And that's the rate that you will be opening on, it on Monday morning. Subject to, subsequent to this, the intervening exchange rate will be market determined, but mostly influenced by the price of gold and also 
the exchange rates for the other currencies that <coughs> comprise the basket, as well as infl inflation differentials between us and the nations of the currencies that we'll be using. And the way it's obvious to determine the exchange rate will depend on, in the basket, if there's more gold than everything else, then the exchange rate will be more influenced than gold than other than by any, any other thing. Foreign exchange liquidity management. The bank will use 50% of the foreign currency proceeds from surrender requirement for strategic intervention in the foreign exchange market. What I'm saying is that when we get money being surrendered under the 25% arrangement, we we'll use half of that money to go into the market. So over and above the reserves that the central bank has, we also have an additional amount that we'll be get, getting as we purchase foreign currency for surrender and putting it back into the market to ensure that the market foreign exchange liquid situation is always uh, liquid. The remaining currency, balance of the currency after that 50% will be used to satisfy government's uh, foreign exchange requirements and obligations, and also will be used to increase the reserves of the central bank. I'm starting with total reserves of 285 million. Uh, Dr. Mangunda said to me, after two years, he wants to see all those votes full of gold. And it's achievable. Foreign exchange, foreign currency retention thresholds remain standardized at 75% across the board, except for small scale gold producers. So what we are saying is that unless you are a small scale gold producer, everyone, when you receive your foreign exchange uh, uh, export receipts, you must surrender 25%. I am a stickler to, to, to rules. This country is not animal farm. There are no people who are more equal than others. If it's 25%, it's 25% for everyone. And I am not going to entertain anyone coming to my office and saying that I'm so and so, I need to retain 100%. It ain't gonna happen under my life. So if there are any exporters here beyond, I will not entertain those requests. We need foreign exchange to oil this economy, and it can only come from exports. And if you are going to say you are going to keep your, all, all your exports to yourself, how else is the nation going to get for it? Interest rate policy. The bank has recalibrated the bank policy rate from 130% per annum to 20% per annum, consistent with the new monetary policy framework. The overnight accommodation interest rate has been set at 5% above the bank policy rate and the bank deposit facility interest rate at 7.5% below the bank policy rate, thus giving the starting interest rate corridor of between 11% to 25%. The bank policy rate and the corresponding interest rate corridor will be reviewed by the Monetary Policy Committee from time to time in line with inflation development. Banks have been accused in the past of not paying interest on deposits. I know I stand guilty as child, I used to be one of them, I'm no longer. <laughs> so, going forward, the minimum savings and time deposit interest rates on ZIG are set at 9% and 7.5% below the deposit facility rate of 12.5%, of meaning that 12.5% minus 9% is your minimum savings rate, and 12.5% minus 7.5% is your minimum rate for time deposits. Minimum interest rates on FCA deposits remain unchanged at 1% and 2.5% for savings and time deposits, respectively. Open market operations. Going forward, open market operations will be carried out to ensure that at any one time, reserve money will be fully backed by a corresponding 
a composite basket of reserves comprising precious minerals, mainly gold and foreign currency balances. In other words, we are never going to have a situation where if we have got one dollar in reserves, we have got one dollar ten in current circulating more. We will have one dollar or less in currency in circulation. All non-current interest bearing non-negotiable certificates of deposits, NNCDs on ZIG, in ZIG, beyond the optimal liquidity level and above the encumbered, uh, and, and those encumbered by foreign exchange current structure, will be converted into tenures of one year and above. Statutory reserve requirements. The statutory reserve requirements for demand deposits in ZIG and savings and time deposits in ZIG remain standardized at 15% and 5% respectively. However, in order to continue to foster continued financial sector stability in the face of increased lending in foreign currency, measures will be put in place to, to, to enhance foreign exchange liquidity, moderate foreign currency exposures, and mitigate against payment gridlocks in the banking sector. In this regard, the bank is increasing the statutory reserve ratio for foreign currency demand deposits from 15% to 20% with effect from 8 April 2024. What I mean by that is that when banks lend money in forex from local forex deposits, there is an element of printing money and we do not want to create virtual dollars in this market. As has happened before in 2017. Hence, we are introducing this measure to try and curtail lending using local or foreign currency deposits in this market. We have no problem if a bank secures a line of credit, they can lend 100% of it. The bank is, uh, the structural reserve requirements for foreign currency time and savings deposits shall, however, remain at the current level of 5%. All treasury bills previously denominated in Zimbabwe dollars will be converted to ZIG and the interest rate adjusted accordingly. As I mentioned earlier on, there has been an outcry as far as bank charges are concerned. Again, I used to be uh, in the commercial banking sector and I stand guilty as charged, but we cannot continue to have a situation where a tobacco, a tobacco farmer from Chendambuya sells their tobacco, uses the money, and maybe leaves a hundred dollars in the account, and by the time they come back next season, the money is now minus 100. What happened to the hundred? So, with immediate effect, banks will not charge monthly bank maintenance or service charges for individual bank accounts with a conservative balance a daily balance of $100 and below, or its equivalent in ZIG for a period of up to 30 days. At least, if you leave your $100 in your account end of season, you should be able to find it in your account beginning of next season. Other supporting measures and obligations. I did talk earlier that one of the things we wanted to address was promoting the increased demand for local currency. In accordance with structural instrument 218 of 2023, the use of the multi-currency in the economy for the settlement of any transactions was extended to 31 December 2013. And that is standing with the structural instrument. <coughs> Accordingly, measures will be put in place to gradually promote the increased use of the new structured currency as we move towards 2030. In order to foster demand for the local currency, government will make it mandatory 
for companies to settle at least 50% of their tax obligations on quarterly payment debts, QPDs, in ZIG. This is something that we have already discussed and agreed with the Ministry and they will be issued a statutory instrument in that regard. Also, the bank, the Reserve Bank, will continue with this strict liquidity management in order to mitigate against shocks that cause shock, uh, uh, spikes in the exchange rate. Auction allotment obligations. Following the introduction of a refined interbank market, all outstanding auction allotments will be converted into ZIG and issued out as NNCDs for a period of 24 months at an interest rate of 7.5%. This process will allow beneficiaries to maintain the value of their proceeds under the new framework. By the way, I may not have made it very clear, the auction is dead. We are not going to have the foreign exchange auction anymore. The last auction was held last year, and that is the last auction. Outstanding uh, payments for auction surrender obligation. All outstanding payments for foreign exchange purchased by Treasury under the 25% surrender requirement will be converted to a ZIG denominated instrument with a tenor of one year at an interest rate of 7.5% per annum. Gold coins and gold bag digital tokens. Gold coins and gold bag digital tokens shall continue to be used as investment instruments and to manage liquidity in the economy with a view to stabilizing the currency in the exchange rate. As already indicated, the gold bag digital token is no longer called ZIP, but is now going to be called GBDT. By 8 April 2024, which is on Monday, all mobile network operators who are essential to the national financial inclusion strategy will also be expected to ensure that their customers can effortlessly transition from Zimbabwe dollar wallets to ZIG wallets. <coughs> Domestic pricing of goods and services. Once the local currency is denominated in ZIG, all domestic traders are expected to consistently modify their pricing systems in line with the currency reforms. With immediate effect, prices for goods and services shall be converted using the conversion rate that I mentioned earlier on, and thereafter quoted in ZIG for the transacting public's convenience. Within seven days from today, all entities other than banks and MNOs are expected to have completed the configuration of their systems to conduct business in ZIG. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if we implement these measures, we would expect them to have an impact on inflation, which we are estimating to be to end the year at between 2 and 5 percent annually. So, what are the takeaways from the, this monetary policy statement? We have introduced a new monetary policy framework that will enable stability, simplicity, certainty, and predictability. And I hope you will assist us in making this currency work. I thank you. I think we will take questions to Dr. Machi. You can look at it. Let me um, 
ask you to join me in thanking our governor for the eloquent uh, presentation. Um, and so, as uh, you all expected, the moment has come uh, for us to create an environment of stability, predictability, and certainty, and therefore to engender confidence in not only the currency, but also the economy at large. Let me tell you with no hesitation that I am extremely excited, and so is everybody at the Reserve Bank and within government, I hope, that these measures will go a long way from resolving some of the problems that we've been facing as a nation. With your indulgence, Governor, um, I will ask that we take two sets of questions. We'll begin with um, at least five to begin with, um, and then we'll take another set of five. But as you know, uh, the governor's time and the uh, official's time is, is limited. Uh, I will ask that um, those who don't get a chance uh, not to despair. They can send uh, their additional questions uh, through our email at the Reserve Bank, uh, info at arabiz.co.za. I will give you uh, that uh, uh, email address again later. So I will take the first five. Let me begin by the gentleman over here. Um, your name is Columbus, I'm with uh, Voice of America. Uh, Governor, you have said, taken time, not under my watch. This, uh, this will not happen, this will not happen. Uh, of course, the government said that, but we have heard before, someone saying if the RTG falls from what is to what, I'm, 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 I'm inside. What, what will you do if what you have said, taking time, will not happen under my watch? Okay, um, I wish there was a lady's hand. Is there one? At the back there, please. At the back, I can't see you. Um, um, my name is Evidence. I just wanted to find out um, if you did say that the zip dollar balances are 80 million, why bother? Because it's such a small percentage that you're going through this whole process to protect small U.S. dollar balances. Thank you. Okay. Um, gentlemen, um, I think that gentleman raised up his hand first. Then I will come to you and to you. Those will be the first five. Thank you very much. My name is Blessed Mutlang from Hutchinson TV in Um I want to find out uh, the prices of commodities that are going to be, that are going to be converted to C. Um, are, are they going to be changing daily, checking the, the, uh, the exchange rate? Because, for instance, if today the bread is one sick and there's movement on the exchange rate, it means tomorrow you wake up and it's 1.5 sick or one, one and a quarter sick. Is, is that movement not going to undermine confidence and the desire to keep uh, the local currency? And I said, uh, yes, my name, over here. my name is Sylvester Tafumane from Sly Media TV. I've heard the governor say that uh, they are disbanding the foreign currency uh, auction. What is the good reason why it's not being continued? So, um, one more over here. Okay, uh, privilege, uh, watch better German TV. How will the, in a nutshell, how will the new currency affect the daily uh, financial transactions for the ordinary Zimbabwean? I think that question is almost similar to the previous one. But anyway, uh, thank you very much. We will, I will call upon the governor to um, address some of these questions, uh, and, and then we'll take another set, or the last set of five questions after his response. Governor. So, 
25% forex surrender to ensure that there is liquidity in the foreign exchange market. Efficient and optimal money supply management. Under my watch, we are going to ensure that at any one time, reserve money growth is contained within the limits of the growth in gold and foreign currency reserves that we have. We are also going to continue on the tight monetary policy uh, stance that has been the hallmark of the central bank up until now. And above all, I don't believe in quasi-fiscal activities. It's not going to happen under my heart. My mandate, as spelled out in the Reserve Bank Act, is very clear. And I have no intention whatsoever to do other people's jobs. Or do my job as central bank government, as defined in the Reserve Bank Act. In that respect, we have moved all uh, quasi fiscal obligations that had been created, some not out of our making. I think the governor will tell you that we had a foreign exchange crisis and he had to do something to address that. In fact, he has a good term for that. He calls them quasi foreign current fiscal operations. But that is the past. We are not going to be involved in any quasi fiscal operations. We have moved the balances to the treasury in an effort to clean up the balance sheet of the central bank. In that respect also, people have 
said that, well, the problem is that treasure from time to time will come and borrow money from the central bank. Again, under my watch, if there is going to be any accommodation at all to treasure, it will be within the limits contained in the Reserve Act. And the Reserve Act is very clear in that respect. This is your Uba TV, Hakudi Masifi, Slay Media TV, and this sport and dream was sitting as a one and up a news in that car one run name of Yuzi, Slay Media TV, Mandy Change your Angma Dreams. Slay, yeah, yeah, Slay Media, 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 who change your vision, you might get to use, who change your life, you might get to use. Panzira, Semaketo Yus, Kutipa Guara, Maguana, Kanaka, Slay, Yaya, Slay, Media.